Hello, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as mutations and types of mutations. Now, mutation can be defined as a permanent change in the sequence of a DNA fragment or a gene. Now, this mutation is also present in RNA during the process of transcription, and it can be present in protein during the process of translation. But RNA and protein is present in our body for a certain period of time. And after that, they will get degraded by different enzymes and by different exonucleases. So our body will suffer that disease for a certain period of time. But after that, we will recover from that disease and will feel better. Okay, so the main reason for the mutation is a DNA, not the RNA and the protein. Now, there are a lot of different causes for mutations inside the gene. The main causes are radiations, the chemical that we ingest, and the infectious agent that attacks our body and produces different types of disease. Now, DNA mutations can be of two different types. If the mutation is present in the coding region of the DNA, then it is called as coding gene mutation. Coding genes are basically going to code for messenger RNA and this messenger RNA will affect the protein from it. The other type of DNA mutations can be present in the non-coding area of the DNA and it is called as non-coding genes mutation. Now these mutations can be present in the regulatory part of the DNA which is controlling the amount of protein that needs to get synthesized and it is also present at the attenuator site where the process of transcription will end. So if the mutation is present in that region that will come under the category of non-coding genes and if they are going to transcribe and translate into a protein and that protein is affected by it then it will be called as the coding gene mutations. Now types of mutation. Mutations can be categorized into four different types. First type is at the DNA level. Second type is at the protein level and it is also called as point mutations. The third category is in the molecular genetics and the fourth one is called as chromosome mutations. Now at the DNA level we have further different types and that be called as substitutions, deletions, insertions, inversions. At protein level or point mutations we have silent mutations, missense mutation, nonsense mutation, frame shift deletion mutation, frame shift insertion mutation. In molecular genetics, we have neutral and non-neutral category. In chromosome mutations, we have two categories. The first category is called as structural mutations, which include deletions, duplications, inversions, insertions, and translocations. The other category is numerical mutations, which include polyploidy and aneuploidy. Now we are going to discuss all these types in this video. So let's start with the general type, and that type is that mutations are not always bad. Some mutations are useful, some are harmful, and some are neutral in nature. Useful or beneficial mutations can be present in the bacteria that is fighting against the antibiotic that is present in our body. Now those bacteria produce resistance against that antibiotic and will make a natural selection on those bacteria that cannot produce the resistance. That's why our doctor told us that if you are taking antibiotics, just complete the course and don't stop the medications in between because if you do, the bacteria will produce resistance against that antibiotic and that antibiotic will not be that much effective for those bacteria. Now some type of mutations are created by ourselves or man-made. Just like we are changing the quality and quantity of the food in order to feed the amount of people we have. So these mutations can also be visible in the flowers, in the fruits and in different type of plants. Harmful mutations. Harmful mutations obviously produce disease in our body. So what type of disease we have? It depends on the cell type. Now we have two different types of cell in our body.
One is called the somatic cells that are same in male and female, but gametes are different in male and female. So if the mutation is present in the gametes, so before fertilization, as you can see in this picture, this egg is mutated. Now, if the mutation is present before fertilization, that type of mutation will pass on to the next generation, and that type of disease is called as germline mutations. But if the mutation is present on the cell after fertilization, then that type of disease will be appear in that individual, but will not pass on to the next generation. Now, that type of mutation is called as somatic mutation. Let's take a real example of germline mutation and somatic mutation. So the real life example I have is called as retinoblastoma. Retinoblastoma is an eye cancer that begins in retina, the sensitive lining on the inside of your eye. They can be non-heredity as the mutation is occurring after the fertilization. So one child is suffering from the disease, but the other child is not suffering from it. It can be heredity, so if it is present in the germline of one individual, it can pass on that disease to their children as a carrier, and that carriers will pass on the disease to their kids in the second generation, and the symptoms will be visible there. So retinoblastoma can be heredity and can be non-heredity. Perfect example of germline mutation and somatic cell mutation. Neutral mutations. Now from the types of mutation, neutral mutations fall under the category of substitution, silent mutation, and neutral mutation. Now let's discuss the neutral mutations for that. Now let's take an original piece of DNA. So for example, if this is a DNA and these are the nitrogenous bases present there, it will make messenger RNA from it and all the nitrogenous bases will be complementary to it. So guanine will make cytosine from it and thionine will make adenine from it. Adenine will make uracil from it because in RNA, the uracil is present instead of thymine. Now this messenger RNA will code for protein. Three nucleotides is going to make one amino acid. So these are the codes for different amino acids present there. Now this is a piece of protein that we have. Now in this case, for example, a mutation occurs at this area. So this guanine will get replaced by adenine somehow. Now this adenine will make a complementary nucleotide in messenger RNA and that will be uracil. Now CAU will also code for histidine, so the sequence of amino acid will not be changed because CAU and CAC both codes for histidine. Now this type of mutation is neutral because it is not affecting the protein synthesis. Let's take another example. Now let's assume that this adenine will get replaced by guanine somehow. And this guanine will produce cytosine instead of uracil on messenger RNA. Now GCA does not code for valine because all the codes for valine starts with the GU and the third nucleotide can changes from U, C, A, and G. GCA rather codes for alanine and all the codes for alanine starts with the GC and the third nucleotide can change from uracil, cytosine, adenine, and guanine respectively. Now both of these amino acids belong to hydrophobic amino acid category. So the amino acid in the protein is changed, but it is not affecting the function of that protein. So again, it comes under the category of a neutral mutation. Transition versus transversion mutations. Transition versus transversion mutations fall under the category of substitutions. Transition mutations mean that if a purine is going to replace a purine or a pyrimidine is going to replace a pyrimidine, in that case, that type of substitution is called as transition mutation. Now in this picture, as you can see, this adenine will get replaced by guanine. Now adenine is a purine and guanine is also a purine, so it will fall under the category of transition mutation. The second category is called as transversion mutation.
Transversion mutation means that if a purine will get replaced by a pyrimidine or a pyrimidine will get replaced by a purine, and that type of substitution is called as transversion mutations. Now in this picture, the cytosine is get replaced with guanine. Now cytosine is a pyrimidine and guanine is a purine. So it will fall under the category of transversion mutations. The effect of the substitution cannot be judged because it depends on the type of protein it has. Missense mutation. Missense mutations under the type of mutations will fall under the category of substitutions and missense mutation. Now, the missense mutation means that we are going to replace a nucleotide and it will change the amino acid present inside that protein. Now, that protein have two different cases. The first case is that the properties of the protein is change, and the second case is that it will not affect the properties of that protein. If the properties of that protein is changed, then that type of missense mutation is called as non-conservative missense mutation. And if the properties of the protein is not changed, then that will called as a neutral mutation or conservative missense mutation. Let's take a real life example of missense mutation. So in this case, I'm taking sickle cell anemia. In this picture, you can see this is the DNA sequence that we have. And this thymine will get replaced by adenine. Now thymine is a pyrimidine and adenine is a purine. So it is also a transversion mutation. Now, by the replacement of thymine with adenine, it will change the amino acid from glutamic acid into valine. The change in amino acid sequence causes the hemoglobin molecule to crystallize when oxygen level in the blood are low. As a result, the red blood cells sickle and get stuck in the small blood vessels. So, they are changing the properties of that protein, so it will fall under the category of non-conservative missense mutation. Next, next is nonsense mutation. Nonsense mutation under the types of mutation will fall under the category of substitution, nonsense mutation, and non-neutral mutations. Nonsense mutation means that when a nucleotide is substituted with another nucleotide, that will become a stop codon and that will terminate the process of translation. So in this case, we will not have the proper amount of polypeptide chain of that protein, so that protein cannot function properly. Now it is definitely affecting the properties of that protein. That's why it comes under the category of non-neutral mutations as well. Deletion mutation. Deletion mutations under the type of mutation will fall under four different categories. At DNA level, it will fall under deletions. At protein level, it will fall under frame shift deletion mutation. In molecular genetics, it will fall under non-neutral mutations, and in chromosome mutation, it will fall under the category of structural mutations. Now, the structural mutations or deletion is also changing the structure of chromosome, and it is usually occurring by the double-strand DNA damage, because we can lose a part of nucleotide in that scenario. Usually, DNA double strand break occurs when the cell is in interphase. And the DNA repair system we have will work when the cell will divide, so it will be either under mitosis or meiosis stage. Deletion mutations can be of three different types. The first type is called as terminal deletion. As you can see in this picture, this chromosome will have a single break. And by this break, we are losing gene 4 and gene 3. Now this gene 4 and gene 3 is lost and degraded and the repair system only joined gene 2, gene 1, gene 1, gene 2, and gene 3. Interstitial deletions. Interstitial deletion means that we lost a part of chromosome that is present in the center of that chromosome. Now in this picture, as you can see, we have two breaks in this chromosome and we lost gene 3 and gene 2 in that case. Now you might be wondering why gene 4 is still present on the chromosome and is not lost or degraded. 
That can be the situation if the chromosome is present in the condition like this. Now in this picture, as you can see, that the chromosome is making a loop. In this loop, the break occurs here, and we are losing the two genes for that, and these genes are present in the middle. But the corners are still intact in that form. The third type of deletion is called as microdeletions, in which only one or two nucleotides will get deleted somehow. Now let's discuss the microdeletions in detail. Let's assume that this is the DNA double strand we have. This part of the DNA will get break from it somehow. So we will have situation like this. Now by the deletion of this GCA, we are going to lose one amino acid because three nucleotides can code for one amino acid. So the protein that will be generated by this DNA will have glutamine, arginine, threonine, and isoleucine. But this arginine is not present here because the nucleotide that is going to code for this arginine is lost in this deletion mutation. This type of deletion mutation is called as deletion non-frame shift mutation. Let's talk about deletion frame shift mutation. Now, as you can see, we have nucleotides here and three nucleotides code for one amino acid. Now, in this picture, this guanine is get lost and degraded somehow. Now these two adenines will take this guanine and will synthesize another amino acid and that is called as lysine. And the other two nucleotides will take the third nucleotide from glycine and will make histidine. So by this way all the patterns of amino acid will get changed and this type of deletion is called as deletion frame shift mutation. During the process of meiosis or mitosis, when the chromosomes do the synapsis part, during the synapsis after deletion, we will see a loop forming by the normal chromosome on the deleted part of the chromosome here, like this. Let's take a real-life example of deletion mutation. So the example I have is called as cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a progressive genetic disease that causes persistent lung infections and limit the ability to breathe over time. Now if you look closely at what is the cause of the cystic fibrosis, you will find some deletions present on the chromosome number 7. Now let's take a close look at the chromosome number 7 and we will find out that three nucleotides will get deleted and the cytosine, thymine and thymine will result in the deletion of one amino acid and in this case that is phenylalanine. And phenylalanine is present on the position 508. Now you might be wondering that the cytosine of this isoleucine code is also deleted. So why isoleucine is not get affected in that case? Now this adenine and thymine will make bond with this thymine that is present for phenylalanine. And ATT also codes for isoleucine. That's why isoleucine is not get affected, but phenylalanine will get deleted by the deletion of these three nucleotides. This type of mutation is called as deletion non-frame shift mutation they are not changing the whole sequence of the amino acid they are only deleting one amino acid from the chromosome cystic fibrosis can also show frame shift deletion mutation and that frame shift deletion mutation is present at the position of 1213 and the deletion is thymine now this is the DNA strand we have and this is the area where the deletion of thymine will occur now if you can see before deletion all the amino acids present on the two strands are same but after deletion all the amino acids present on the deleted strand is different so this is a type of deletion frame shift mutation you can also recognize that it is also making a stop codon over here but in the normal protein, the protein is not stopped, rather it does have more amino acid present in the polypeptide chain. So this is a good example of nonsense mutation as well because the substitution of one amino acid is creating a stop codon and terminating the process of translation. Insertion mutation Insertion mutation under the types of mutation is present at the DNA level as insertions, 
at protein level as frame shift insertion mutation, in molecular genetics as non-neutral mutation, and in chromosome mutation as structural mutation. Now, insertion mutations can be of two different types. Insertion non-frame shift mutation and insertion frame shift mutation. So let's discuss the insertion non-frame shift mutation. I'm again taking the same DNA double strand here, and at this point, I'm going to add three nucleotides. Now, these three nucleotides is going to code for a new amino acid. So in the polypeptide chain, we have this phenylalanine that should not be present here, but due to the insertion mutation, it will come in this polypeptide chain. With the addition of this phenylalanine, the properties of the protein can get changed. So this is insertion non-frame shift mutation. Let's take a real life example of insertion non-frame shift mutation. And that example is Huntington disease. Now it is a disease of progressive breakdown of nerve cells in the brain and results in the movement, thinking and psychic disorder. Now, if you look closely, the insertion mutation is present on chromosome number 4, and the insertion is the three nucleotides, that is CAG. The addition of repetitive CAG will add a new amino acid in the polypeptide gene, and that amino acid is glutamine. With lots and lots of glutamine present in the polypeptide chain, can denature the neuron, and it will do the psychic disorders for the brain. Now let's discuss insertion frame shift mutation. I'm again taking the same DNA and now I'm going to add two nucleotides instead of three. By the addition of two nucleotides inside the strand, we will face a frame shift mutation. As you can see in this polypeptide chain, all the amino acid that is present here have a different color. This amino acid should not be present here, but due to the frame shift mutation, all the sequence of the amino acids will get changed by it. And this is called as insertion frame shift mutation. The real life example of insertion frame shift mutation is Tay-Sachs disease. Now Tay-Sachs disease is a genetic disorder that results in the destruction of nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord. In this disease, the enzyme that breaks the fatty acid in the body is absent. So the child can face brain damage, cataracts, jaundice, enlarged liver, kidney damage, and a lot of different other symptoms. If we look closely that where the insertion frame shift mutation occurs, we can find out that the mutation occurs on chromosome number 15. Now on chromosome number 15, we can see the sequence of the messenger RNA here. Now in this picture, all the pink nucleotide strand is basically showing us that this is the messenger RNA. And all the green amino acid is showing us that this is the normal sequence of the polypeptide chain of this Tay-Sachs disease. Now, with the insertion of these four nucleotides inside the strand will cause the frame shift mutation. Now, ACA is in blue color because it is going to add a new amino acid in the polypeptide chain and that is threonine. And this U is shaded showing us that this uracil is going to create the frame shift mutation and all the amino acid afterwards will get changed from the normal one. And this is a perfect example of insertion frame shift mutation. Duplication mutation. Duplication mutation under the types of mutation will fall under the category of non-neutral and structural mutation. Duplication mutation means that if we have a gene, that gene will repeat itself inside the chromosome. They can repeat twice, they can repeat thrice, depending on the situation. Now, let's take a real-life example of duplication as well. The real-life example of duplication is polyester Kallian syndrome. Polyester Kallian syndrome is a multi-system disorder in early childhood and the symptoms are that they have extremely weak muscle tone, intellectual disability, distinctive facial features, sparse hair, areas of unusual skin coloring or pigmentation, and other birth defects. Now in this disease, what will happen is that the duplication occurs on chromosome number 12 and this duplication is called as mosaic tetrasomy 12p. 
Now, if you look closely at the chromosome here, you can see that each chromosome have two parts. The small part is called as 12P and the large part is called as 12Q. Now, in this disease, this 12P repeat itself and make another chromosome called as isochromosome. Now, why it is called as mosaic tetrasomy? Because now we have four parts of 12P. So this is 1, 2, 3, and 4. It is also visible in the x-rays of the patient. As you can see, that there is a tiny chromosome present with the normal one. Inversion mutations. Inversion mutation under the type of mutation will come under the category of structural mutations. Inversion mutation means that if you have a normal chromosome and there are two breaks occur on each chromosome, part of the DNA will flick back to 180 degree and join back again. So in this case, instead of 5, 7 gene will be here, 6 will be replaced by 6, and 7 will be replaced by 5. So the part of this DNA flip itself to 180 degree and join back again to this normal chromosome. Now, this chromosome can create mutant proteins or aberrant level of normal protein. Why aberrant level of normal protein? Because the regulators of the gene expression could be moved out of the position with respect to their target. So the regulators are not close to those genes anymore. So they cannot regulate the amount of protein that should be made inside a cell. So it can produce the amount of protein more than it is needed, just like cancer. This is called as inversion heterozygous. We have two different types of inversion mutation. One is called as pericentric inversion in which the chromosome is involved in the flipping over of the gene. And the second one is called as paracentric inversion in which the centromere is not involved in the inversion mutation. Now, the normal chromosome, when it will reach to the prophase 1, this chromosome will make a loop structure in order to do the synapses with the normal chromosome. And this will produce mild change or no change in the phenotype because all the genes are perfectly aligned with their normal chromosome. But the problem arises when this mutation is present in the gametes because gametes can do the crossover part. Now let's see how the crossover will occur in pericentric inversion and paracentric inversion. The first inversion is paracentric chromosome inversion. So I'm taking a normal chromosome like here and they have genes like A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. And then we have the inverted chromosome in which we have genes A, D, C, B, E, F, G, H. So the inversion mutation is occurring over here and the centromere is not involved in this inversion. Now in meiosis prophase 1, this chromosome will make an inverted loop like this. Now, as you can see in this picture, that crossing over is occurring between the chromatid 2 and chromatid 4. So if I move my cursor like this, this is the chromosome 2 and this is the chromosome number 4. And as you can see, this is the part where the crossing over is occurring. Now after crossing over, what will happen? You can see that there are two different conditions here. The first condition is here. This chromatid contains two centromere now and a random break will occur to remove this kind of bridge. The chromosome with the two centromere is called as diacentric. The other part doesn't have any centromere now, so it is also called as acentric. Now acentric fragment is not viable. Let's see what is happening in the segregation phase or anaphase. In the anaphase, a random break will occur between the chromatid 2 and chromatid 4, and then we will have four different products. The first chromatid is normal. Second and fourth chromatid have deletion problems here, and chromatid 3 have inversion mutation, but it is still viable to produce gametes. Pericentric chromosomal inversion. Now let's take a pair of normal chromosome again and then I'm taking an inverted chromosome. Now in this inverted chromosome, as you can see, the inversion is present here and the centromere is involved in this inversion. 
Now let's see what will happen in meiosis. So in prophase 1, the inverted chromosome will make a loop like this. Again, crossing over is occurring here between chromatid 2 and chromatid 4. After crossing over, we will have chromatid 1 as a viable gene product. Chromatid 2 is inviable because they are facing duplications and deletion. As you can see, gene A is duplicated while it is not having the gene E of GH. The third condition has inversion problem, but it is still viable and can produce gametes. The fourth condition have deletion and duplication problem as they don't have the gene ABC, rather they have the duplication of EFGH in this picture. Translocation mutation. Translocation mutation under the types of mutation will fall under the category of structural mutation. Translocation is a type of chromosomal abnormality in which a chromosome breaks and a portion of it reattaches to a different chromosome. Now we have two different types of translocation. One is the balance type. Now in this picture, as you can see, this purple is the chromosome A and this light pink is the chromosome B and they are exchanging part with each other. But this part belongs to the long strand of each chromosome and they are exchanging almost equal parts with each other. So they are doing a balanced translocation here. On the other side, as you can see, that we have an unbalanced translocation. Now what will happen here is that this child from the balanced translocation will marry another person. And now the gametes they form have one normal chromatid and one defected one. Now in this case, the chromosome A have duplication while the chromosome B is facing deletion problem. Translocation mutation can also be categorized as reciprocal translocation and Robertsonian translocation. Now what is happening here that again the larger part of this chromosome is exchanging part with each other so they are again the type of balance translocation and it is also called as reciprocal translocation. While on the other hand the Robertsonian translocation means that the small portion is cut off but the large portion attach itself with each other. And this type of translocation is unbalanced and it is coming under the category of Robertsonian translocation. Let's take a real life example of translocation mutation. And the example I have is called as Down syndrome. Down syndrome is a chromosomal condition that is associated with intellectual disability, a characteristic facial appearance and weak muscle tone in infancy. Again, on the genetic basis, you can see that we have abnormality present on chromosome number 21. Now, what will happen in chromosome number 21? Here, this green portion is the normal chromosome 14, and this purple portion is the normal chromosome 21. By this translocation mutation, we have six possible segregation products. The first one is normal. The second one will have the balanced translocation. The third one is having the unbalanced translocation in which the chromosome 21 is facing duplication and chromosome 14 is facing deletion problems. Last but not least, numerical mutations. Numerical mutations means the addition or deletion of a chromosome from a set of chromosomes present inside the cell. As we know that each species contains a specific set of chromosomes in it, just like human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 chromosomes in total, in which two chromosomes belong to the gametes that are different in male and female, while 22 pairs of chromosomes are same in male and female. Ploidy means that it is a number of a complete set of chromosomes present in a specific cell. Ploidy can be differentiated into euploidy and aneuploidy. The difference between euploidy and aneuploidy is the addition or deletion of a set of chromosomes in a cell is called as euploidy or addition or deletion of a one chromosome inside the cell is called as aneuploidy. Now let's discuss euploidy first. Euploidy can be differentiated into monoploidy diploidy and polyploidy. Chromosomes are normally present in diploid form, while monoploidy is visible when the cell is in meiosis stage. 
Polyploidy is the main cause of disease, so we are going to focus on polyploidy only. Now, the polyploidy we have have two different types. One is called as autopolyploidy and one is called as allopolyploidy. Autopolyploidy defined as polyploid species result through a single species by genome duplication. And allopolyploidy means that polyploid species result through a fusion of two or more diploid genomes from a different species. Polyploidy is commonly present in plants and they are rarely causing any disease inside the human being. Aneuploidy. Aneuploidy means the addition or deletion of one or two chromosomes inside the cell. Now, as you can see, they have three pairs of chromosome here, and this is chromosome 1, this is chromosome 2, and this is chromosome 3. Now, it can be differentiated into trisomy or monosomy. Now here, as you can see, the addition of one chromatid in the second chromosome is causing aneuploidy. And this type of mutation is called as trisomy. While on the other condition, as you can see, that one chromatid from chromosome number two is missing. And this type of mutation is called as monosomy. In most cases, these effects are detrimental and they produce individuals that are less likely to survive than a euploid individual. So, before recognition of an euploidy, the person dies due to that disease. The major reason of polyploidy and aneuploidy is non-disjunction process. And what does that mean? That during anaphase, when all the chromatids are going towards their centromere, the unbalanced shifting of chromosome towards centromere in each cell is causing aneuploidy. As you can see over here, the addition of one chromatid occurs in this gamete, so this is a trisomic cell. And over here, we are missing one chromatid, so this is a monosomic cell. This non-disjunction can occur at two different stages. Non-disjunction can occur in the first meiotic division or second meiotic division. Let's take a real-life example of aneuploidy. The example I have is called as Turner syndrome. Now, Turner syndrome is a type of disease that usually occurs to a woman. And in this disease, we are losing one sex chromosome and that is X. As you can see in this picture, we have 22 pairs of chromosomes that are autosomic in nature and we are missing one X chromosome here. So, this type of individual will have low seat ears, small jaw bones, short and wide neck, cardiac problems, swollen hands and feet, hyperthyroidism, wide chest, infertility, numerous moles, problems in lymphatic system. So, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe this channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.